You have to say goodbye to Yes. Oh, they are going to be mention going, Jerry West. Yes, they're going to be going to the Jerry West interview from back in 2016, October 17th. Michael, Don, and Peter interviewed the great Jerry West. And, of course, he sadly passed away today at the age of 86. Bye to Yes. We'll see you on Friday. A Ray Row only vehicle tomorrow. Ray Row. Enjoy the I've been in the business now 33 years, and there are very few people I'm in awe of or intimidated by, and this man is sitting to my left, and he is the logo. He is one of the greatest players who ever lived. And I, I'm telling you, I'm a little little bit in awe right now. Jerry West joins us. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, but uh, certainly you shouldn't feel that way. I'm oh, pretty normal. <laughs> all right, here, here, here's the first thing. Just have some fun. You're the logo. Every time you see that logo, that's you. How did that happen? And do you get paid for it? Well, number one, you don't get paid for that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly like it. I could retire, but uh, uh, no. I, I you know, obviously it's something that uh, I've always said, if that's me, then I'm really proud of it. But um, I think things happen that you really don't know how they happen. And uh, I... Um, it's a, it's a great honor, to be honest with you. So no one ever told you this is you, but you could clearly see it's you. Um, I know it's me. Let's put it that way. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. I know it's me. Yes. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, from a business standpoint, they, didn't, they couldn't have that conversation because then they would have to pay. So someone would <laughs> tell you privately, oh, it's you, Jerry. We know. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> there's so many things. You're, you're an executive with the Golden State Warriors. So they won one championship. Last year, they're up three games to one, and they end up losing to the... Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. I, I, I'd like to get your take on LeBron. He gets so much grief. He, I mean, they pick apart everything that he does. And I look at him, I said, he conducts himself in a, in a pretty positive way for a guy who has that kind of spotlight, that kind of talent. What's your take on LeBron James, the man and the, and the, and the player? Well, I happen to mow him a little bit, and uh, I, I don't know how people can criticize him. I really don't. Uh, his teams have been in the NBA Finals the last six years in a row. He's a Swiss Army knife. He does everything for a team. Um, uh, when when his career is over with and people look back, uh, you know, I think there's one player that we hear the name, Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to be right there with him in terms of conversation because of his overall game, uh, defensively, rebounding, passing the ball, his knowledge. He scores the ball, and and, you know, it just... It doesn't seem to be enough for people. I do not understand it at all. Uh, as I say, I've been his biggest supporter for a long time. And I think sometimes when <clears throat> when people get in front of a microphone, they say a few things. Uh, I think people look at them a little bit differently. And I think when he said, I'm taking my talents to, uh, to uh, uh, Florida or Miami, um, I don't think that was probably what people wanted to hear. And when you lose a player of his stature, particularly a, a, a a city like Cleveland, which is real proud of its athletes, and obviously he grew up there in that area. I think it was a, 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 a blow to them, and I think sometimes in the course of a conversation when he's trying to do something for charity, uh, it never came out that when he was on that broadcast until a few days later, there was a, a number of millions of dollars that went to a charity. No one ever talked about that, but they were critical of him, which I think is wrong. But I feel like he's one of his biggest cheerleaders. Um, and, um, again, I just think it's wrong to people point a finger at him. I think the other thing that's happened, and I think it's a relatively new phenomenon, is winning. You know, he can't be Jordan because Jordan was 6-for-6 six six in the finals and LeBron lost. He lost his first year in Miami, lost his first year going back to Cleveland. When did, it, when did rings all of a sudden become such the decider on greatness in an athlete? Well, if you looked at teams that Michael Jordan played on, they, were, they had a lot more talent than the teams LeBron James played on, mm -hmm. period. They did. They fit better together. And... Again, as I mentioned, he does so many things for his team. There's so much pressure on him every night to go out there and perform at this level, that Superman level. Uh, people don't understand when you work as hard as he does and he's how unselfish he is. They don't understand what an enormous amount of pressure and strain you put on your body in doing that every night. He is the man on that team, and if they did not have him... They're not going to beat very many teams, and particularly good teams. What's wrong with the great Jerry West here on the Michael K. Show? It's also interesting, Don just brought up the point about that's how we keep score with championships. Well, you know, you, you were in championships and you lost your share of them. It's a team sport. It's not like tennis or golf. Do you think it's fair that it all gets put on one guy? 
It is not fair, and, and again, I can tell you that two really, really great players, John Stockton, who one of the most unappreciated players in the league we've ever seen uh, because he didn't never called attention to himself, and also Carl Malone, they never won a championship. And look at their enormous contribution to the game of basketball. They won all the time. Unfortunately, they were in the same conference as the Lakers were, and they just could not beat us. We were better than them. Um, so I think it's, un you know, I played in nine NBA finals and lost eight times, um, played better in the finals than I did in the regular season, uh, but it wasn't good enough. And I think for all the memories I have of my days in basketball, the saddest ones are going home after the last game knowing that you've lost. It's, it, it's a horrible feeling. And he's won, and he still gets criticized. Um, you know, maybe if we had had a little bit different, if Draymond... Green didn't get suspended for a game. Uh, he might not have won last year. Right. And what would people say? But I think it, uh, just because of the uniqueness of his play, his size, um, I think that's easy to – it's like Superman. Superman gets criticized sometimes, mm -hmm. okay? And he's just an incredible player. He's a player for the decades. Uh, he's got a few more great years left in him, and uh, people should just enjoy greatness. You mentioned one championship as a player, seven as an executive. Were you able to get the same kind of satisfaction winning as an executive as as a player? No, not at all. It's completely different, and I think the reason why um, is that even though you feel part of it, uh, I think the most difficult job sometimes in building teams is it's good fortune. Everyone talks about how smart people are. There's no experts in this league. Trust me, there's not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's... You just have to be fortunate, and you have to have an eye for talent. But a, a team is like a puzzle, and you can have all four corners covered, and if a middle piece is missing, you're going to be good, but you're not going to be able to win at the highest level, and that's a, that's a championship level. But it was a completely different feel. Obviously, uh, just as soon as the season was over, you start concentrating on the next year, so you really didn't get much much chance to enjoy it. Well, what's the feeling like for you when you're part of the Golden State Warriors organization and you go to Los Angeles to play the Lakers? That's you, you are such a Laker for life in so many ways. What's that feeling like? Well, right now it doesn't feel very good sometimes because, you know, we have so many fans in Los Angeles that have, you know, been around for years. And, you know, just that the Yankees have their own degree of fans here. The Giants probably have more fans than the Jets in the same town. It's about history. And history is wonderful, but... Um, you can't live in the past. You have to live in the future. I mean, there, there's some incredible things that Lakers franchises have has done over the years. A uh, number of championship teams. Uh, some of the greatest players that ever played the game. There's more of them have played in Los Angeles than any other franchise in this league. And it's a testimony to good fortune uh, to have been able to get those kind of players and have them there for so long. But um, as I say, it's uh, you know, it's not fun. It's not fun for me to have to root against the Lakers, that's for sure. Now, getting back to Durant, there's been many people, Michael and I included, that thought it was interesting that he would join the Warriors after. It was like, can't beat him, join him. You know, that it, would it have been better for him to go to another team to establish himself as a champion without having to jump on board with the best team in the NBA? How do you feel about that criticism? Well, you know, to me, that's sour grapes. It really is. I think he... he uh, you know, when when we played, we had no choice to where we were going to mm -hmm. go. And we were part of the, the uh, Players Association being formed. He had a choice to where he wanted to go. And I think it's great for someone of his caliber to have that choice. I wish I'd had that choice in my career. I'll be honest with you. I really do. Would you have gone somewhere else? I might have gone somewhere really? else. Absolutely, I might have. And, again, when you know when you work for owners, you have to work for owners that are, that are honest with you. And sometimes owners can't be honest. And uh, uh, you can tell me no, but don't 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 say something that's not the truth. As a player, you know everyone can. Heck, Oklahoma City. How do they fan, think the fans in Seattle felt when they were moved out of out of Seattle? Sure. They, they felt horrible. Uh, they felt abandoned. And I understand that uh, Mr. Bennett, who owns the uh, uh, the Oklahoma City team, he owns the Seattle team. I know why he moved it there, which is a to me a great stroke of goodwill for the people of Oklahoma City. But to say that every player will end up playing for the same team, that's probably not possible. Everyone wants these great, great players to play in the same city always. That's not going to happen. And the reason it's not going to happen because people have choices today which they did not have before. You worked with Phil Jackson a long time. 
We always got the sense that you two did not love each other. Was that an accurate sense? Well, um, I don't think I don't think that was correct. Uh, we, we certainly didn't. We weren't best of friends, let's okay. put it that way. Mm -hmm. But I respected greatly what he accomplished as a coach, and, and both in Chicago and Los Angeles, with incredible talent. Uh, you know, he's in a completely different environment now. He inherited a. Uh, a team that was uh, not the kind of team I know he hoped to watch or the fans hoped to watch. And he's tried to be aggressive and assemble players here that will give a chance for, give them a chance to compete at a higher level. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? I, I don't know. I don't think Phil knows. I don't think the coach knows. But uh, he will give it his best shot in trying to do things that will make this team better. You think the triangle, triangle is, a, is a, something that should be run in this NBA? Well, I think the way the game has changed, it's much, much more difficult to run it. Um, you know, the three-point line, if you look at players today, they're so much more versatile in the sense that we don't have very many back-to-the-basket centers, okay? And the thing that I like about the offense, everyone gets a, ch a chance to touch the ball, mm -hmm. everyone. And uh, But, again, if you don't have the – again, it's a puzzle, okay? If you don't have the right pieces to put in that puzzle, and the triangle is a puzzle – um, I don't think you can be successful the way the game is played today. The three-point line has changed this game immensely. At times it drives me crazy because I see people taking shots that I think are ill-advised and, and maybe shouldn't be taken in that particular situation. And the Warriors are a great example. I mean, we'll go around and have a, a three-on-one, had a wide-open layup, and they'll throw it out to Curry or Thompson in the corner and you just don't shake your head. I don't understand it. And all of a sudden they may make five or six in a row, and right. then you do understand it. He's just as great as I <laughs> right. was hoping that he would be. Yeah, who knew? Very Pretty cool. good for a Laker. <laughs> I'm a Celtics fan. He's sorry. a Celtics fan. <laughs> what? I yeah. know. I know. I know. That's okay. Listen, I, I often said I would never wear green right. in my life. I wouldn't. And I love the Celtics, and I particularly love Bill Russell, who I still am friendly with. And um, it was I, I detested green, so I would never wear anything green. Well, isn't it, but it is funny. Do you have the feeling with the Celtics and the Lakers? I have this weird thing. That I tried to explain to them one day, and they were giving me a hard time. It's a weird rivalry in that you hate each other, but you're in separate conferences. You don't you don't always play. And there's actually something nice about when both the Lakers and Celtics are good. It feels like everything's right in the NBA. Well, I think again, you know, we're so uh, if, if people pay any attention to history, and I'm, I'm I love history. It, it can be history of all kind. I'm particularly a history a history. Love everything about the wars that we've had, some of our great leaders from years uh, going by and how this country needs leaders like that uh, going forward. But uh, I do think that that was good for basketball. There's something special about those nights, and hopefully uh, Boston's team is a very good young team. And i uh, got a great young coach, Danny Ainge, has brought a lot of nice players in up there. I hope the Lakers can get back to that point soon. So they can those so those games are much more important than they are today. Yeah, that's for sure. Sorry, I have to tell you, it's been an honor. It really yeah. has. I mean, we could we could talk to you for five six hours, but I don't think you'd be into that. So <laughs> no, I would be. Actually, <laughs> if you guys spent four hours, I could spend four uh, three hours at least with oh, you. That'd be great. <laughs>